The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Cap Steve for Botest.com, and today I'll be conducting a full performance evaluation and inspection of the Mako 284, a center console powered by a pair of Mercury's new 300 horsepower four-stroke V8 outboards. Since it seems like everyone's interested in these new Mercury V8s, we're going to start with the performance. The 284 has a length overall of 28 feet 4 inches with a 9 foot 10 inch beam. With two people on board, half a tank of fuel, no water and equipment, we had an estimated test weight of 8,284 pounds. At a maximum RPM of 6,000, we hit a top speed of 55.9 miles per hour. We recorded best cruise at 3,500 RPM where the 284 ran 28.8 miles per hour and burned 14 gallons per hour for 2.1 miles per gallon in a range of 423 statute miles with a 10% reserve of the boat's 228 gallon capacity held in reserve. At 600 RPM, idle speed, we saw 3.7 miles per hour and at 1,000 RPM the 284 ran 6 miles per hour. With their low weight and high displacement, the engine should have a good bottom end punch. In acceleration tests, our test boat planed in just 2.8 seconds and sprinted to 20 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, and 30 came in one in 5.4 seconds. That's quick for a boat that weighs just under 8,300 pounds. Mercury uses transient spark technology to advance engine timing under hard acceleration. It's more of a feel thing than a testable number, but when we nailed the throttles while running at cruising speed, the mid-range acceleration was also quite strong. In turns, the 284 tracked well and carved clean, smooth arcs while leaning comfortably into the maneuvers in both directions. The distinctive silver color designates the Verado's advanced midsection, which contains the electrohydraulic steering system. The Verado is the only one of Mercury's new V8 outboards that can be packaged with the company's joystick piloting system. It makes docking the boat much easier. One of the many technological features of the 300 Verado is sport exhaust doesn't provide any noteworthy advantage, but it sounds cool. To keep up with the boat's power demands, the 115 amp alternator puts out 85 amps for the house batteries at wide open throttle and 20 free amps at idle. The motor also has idle charge, a system that recognizes when battery power drops below a designated level and raises the idle to make 30 amps. It does not increase the boat's speed noticeably. The rounded metal pipe shown here is the top of the exhaust. Mercury designs the engine with the exhaust rooted down the middle of the V of the block. This gives the engine a narrow profile so it can be mounted on 26 inch centers. When a boat is equipped with Mercury's joystick piloting system, however, the engine manufacturer recommends spacing between the motors of one inch for every foot of boat length. That translates into 30 inches apart for a 30 foot boat. The added clearance is required for the way the motors move independently of each other and not always in unison. To make maintenance easier, this inspection hatch opens, giving access to the dipstick, oil fill, and a latch to release the cowling. Now let's step aboard and do our features inspection, starting with the helm station. The 284's vertical dash section measures 25 inches by 14 inches. We like that the compass is in line with the steering wheel, but we're not thrilled by our knees possibly hitting the keys or accessory switches. Mako could move the switches up here to eliminate the issue. Mercury uses a vessel view touchscreen engine control designed to manage the outboard's many features. The unit's a private label version of a Simrad multifunction display. The motor can manage the active trim, adaptive speed control settings, known as cruise control, as well as set the troll and tow control systems for fishing and water skiing. Digital engine controls have the collective trim right where your thumb would be. Move the stick forward and back. It's got detents plus neutral indicators. We can also do individual trim, engine sync to match the RPMs on both, transfer to select which station you're at if we have another bridge uh, station, single lever, you push this, get this one out of the way, and you're only using the left one. Why the left one? Because this is the one with the trim. Throttle only allows us to just vroom, and docking reduces the power. The trim switches have built-in indicators and are positioned so that they can be operated with the driver's throttle hand, so there's always one hand on the wheel. To starboard, there's a USB and auxiliary plug-in. The leaning post has a double-wide cushion for seated or standing travel, and there's storage under the fold-up bottom cushions. This hatch on the port side opens to reveal dedicated slots for tackle boxes, drawers for tools, and a slot for a cutting board. Just aft, the washdown is clearly labeled. The fiberglass hardtop is built on a rugged aluminum frame. The structure is built for outriggers and has spreader lights. The 284's cockpit is 8 feet 5 inches wide and 4 foot 1 inch fore to aft, 
with a cockpit depth of 26 inches. A combing bolster encircles the area to make it more comfortable for anglers to lean against and there are dual 2-inch drains in the aft corners. The fish box hatches open on gas struts and the compartments have mass rating systems. This hatch in the center of the deck provides access to the live oil pumps, batteries, and the fuel water separators. To port, this gate opens to lead to the stern and the aft cleats measure 10 inches. There's rod storage under the gunnels and as we move forward, there's additional space in gunnel lockers. Moving forward, there's a storage compartment in the port gunnel. On the starboard side of the console is the entry to the head. Inside, we found 6 feet 7 inches of headroom and a sink with a pull-up faucet. There's also a stereo, a light, and access to the helm rigging. The battery switches are above a locker that houses the batteries. On the front of the console is a seat with a hinged bottom cushion that opens to uncover a draining cooler. The 284's bow area is wide open for fishing and has storage with hatches that open on gas struts and close on rubber gaskets to reduce rattling. On the foredeck, there are dual navigation lights, chocks, and a single 10-inch cleat. This hatch opens to provide access to the anchor road. With the 600 horses of Mercury Verado power and standard equipment list that makes the boat ready to head offshore, the Mako 284 is a center console that delivers performance and value in a turnkey package. And that's my look at the Mako 284. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.